Okay, here's something a little curious. Let's look at x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals something. I'll hold off what the something is for the moment, but it's actually this level 3 question we did in the first video that we recognized then that x squared plus 6x plus 9 was really a level 2 in disguise. This is really x plus 3 as a squared equals whatever number that's going to be. But here's the thing. Last lecture, we definitely saw that sometimes quadratic equations have two solutions. For example, if I had put a 4 here, we know it's going to be two solutions. This has two possible square roots, namely the positive version, 2, or the negative version, negative 2. Sometimes we get one answer, namely 0 is the only number with a single square root, in which case this quadratic equation with the 0 there would have just one solution. And sometimes it's possible to have no solutions. For example, x plus 3 squared equals negative 5 clearly has no solutions because we proved last time there is no number that multiplies by itself to be negative because negative is negative is positive, in which case no solutions. So that means if I go back to this equation, if I put 4 here, then the quadratic formula should give me two solutions. So check. Actually use the quadratic formula on this equation and show that it gives two solutions. And if you put zero here, then somehow that quadratic formula should be showing you have only one solution. So actually use the quadratic formula on this one and show it actually does give just one solution. And finally, if you put a negative five there, we know there's going to be no solutions, so the quadratic formula should say there are no solutions. What happens if you try to use the quadratic formula on this equation? So, there's something about the quadratic formula either giving two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. It's easy to see at level two stage. It's less tricky to see with the quadratic formula. So, how do you see it in the quadratic formula? Think about it. Did you notice in the previous problems that the quadratic formula gives either two solutions or one solution or no solutions depending on what's happening inside the square root sign? For example, people tend to focus on this quantity because they find it very interesting. If b squared minus 4ac, that if I take whatever the middle number is and square it and subtract from it four times the first number minus the second number, third number, sorry, if that entire quantity is a positive number, then you can take the square root of positive number and you'll get two solutions. Negative b plus the square root of that positive number or the negative version of that square root of that positive number. So if b squared minus 4ac is positive, there'll be two solutions. If b squared minus 4ac turns out to be zero on the nose, just by luck, then actually you'll have negative b plus or minus the square root of zero, but there's only one square root of zero, namely zero. And you only have one solution, namely negative b plus or minus nothing, you ignore that, over 2a. And if b squared minus 4ac turns out to be a negative number, that you're trying to take the square root of a negative number, you say, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, can't do it, can't do it, in which case there's no solutions. So people often say, let's focus on b squared minus 4ac. For they sometimes give it a name, they call it the discriminant of the quadratic. Is that a term you've heard? You might see it in your books. Some books have it, some books don't. But if it's greater than zero, then you've got two solutions. If it equals zero, one solution. If it's negative, zero solutions. So people tend to focus on the discriminant to classify how many solutions you have. Okay, that's good to know, I suppose. So if that's a focus on your curriculum, great. If it isn't, don't worry. You'll figure out there's either zero, one, or two solutions just by doing it, either by doing our quadrus method or by doing the quadratic formula. But it's interesting it's sitting there in the formula in its own right. b squared minus 4ac tells you some information about the quadratic. Okay, great. Okay, here's a very strange practice problem for you. Find all the values b so that x squared minus 2a squared x plus a to the fourth, so these little a's here, equals b cubed, so it's a very strange quadratic equation. Find me all the values b so that this quadratic equation has precisely two solutions. Can you do it? Oh, it is strange. Good luck. Okay, while we're practicing this, let's have another strange looking question. 
For which values of k does kx squared plus 2kx plus 1 equals 0 have just one solution? What values of k make this have just one solution? And while we're at it, let's practice this some more. For which values of k do we have just zero solutions? Find all the values of k for which this equation, this quadratic here, has zero solutions. So on all the k's for just one solution, and then all the k's for zero solutions. Give it a try. Okay, here's another strange question. If ax squared plus bx equals 244 and a half, turns out to have two solutions, my question to you is, what would be the sum of those two solutions? In fact, I'll let you think about this one and then I'll do this answer too. I'll be back in a moment, but you try it first. Okay, so let me use the quadratic formula on this one just to practice the quadratic formula today. So we've really got the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx minus 244 and a half equals zero. Remember the quadratic formula wants an equation equals zero. In which case the quadratic formula says one solution would be x equals negative b plus the square root of b squared minus four times a times that. I'm not going to bother writing it down. All divided by twice a. And the other solution would be negative b minus the same square root, b squared minus 4 times a times that horrible c, all divided by 2a. Now the question was, I want to add those two solutions. So maybe we'll get them slightly different names. There's solution 1, x1. There's solution 2, x2. If I add them, can you see what's going to happen? I'll get negative b over 2a plus a square root over 2a for that one plus a negative b over 2a uh, minus a square root over 2a for that one. Can you see that? Is that too fast? Then I'll have that plus that plus square root over 2a minus square root over 2a. They go away. I'll have negative b over 2a plus a negative b over 2a. I have two copies of negative b over 2a. That is going to be just a negative b over a. The sum of the two solutions will be negative b over a. So whatever the numbers a and b are, that's the sum of the solutions. It's guaranteed to be negative b over a. How's that? It's kind of crazy. All right, so that actually points out something, that the two solutions in the quadratic equation are kind of symmetrical about the point negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a plus something, negative b over 2a minus something. They're kind of balanced either side of that middle point. There's symmetry there. Symmetry. Well, that's really coming from that symmetry of the square, actually, because the quadratic equation is from the symmetry of a square. All right, this is grand. Let's keep practicing.